and welcome to another episode of Frightfully Forgotten Horror Movies. Before we get started, what are you drinking? Today we're drinking Superstition. It is a smoked witch wheat ale. <laughs> nice. Today we're going to be bringing to you 1990s hardware. He doesn't have a huge filmography, but he did direct another underground cult classic hit called Dust Devil. It stars Dylan McDermott, mostly known for being in the TV show The Practice, also American Horror Story. Co-starring with him is Stacy Travis, and she was in Phantasm 2, which we had yep. covered. And there's a bunch of cameos. Iggy Pop makes a voice cameo. Mm -hmm. And Lemmy from Motorhead. <laughs> the movie starts out, we see this uh, drifter, and he's walking through this barren, desolate desert, right? This world that's just looks so shitty and he's all covered up. There's this robot hand that's kind of sticking out of the sand. He gathers it up. He makes his way to uh, a junk dealer. Alvy is his name. He's this little midget guy. <laughs> but he's not so little either. He's not really going to beach ballish. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, kind of. He's round. Two guys are sitting there with him as well. Baxter and Shades. And Alvy kind of goes into the back, and this drifter guy comes in with all his stuff. Baxter makes this drifter guy an offer, flip it for more money. So Alvy ends up buying some parts from him. Baxter ends up hanging on to the rest. As a narration, we hear Iggy Pop. Radio DJ. There's a war going on. There's overpopulation, pollution. Yeah, they make their way to this uh, water taxi. Who's driving it? No less, Lemmy. Yeah. <laughs> You guys want to listen to something? The Ace is Fate! He puts on Motorhead. <laughs> yeah, yeah, his own music. As they walk through the city, you see all the, the homeless vagrants, and they're, they're sort of begging and starving, and everybody's wearing rags, and they end up making their way to Baxter's girlfriend's place, Jill. She makes her way in life by making art out of scrap metal and junk, and Baxter has a present for her, and it's robotic parts. Specifically that head. <laughs> yeah. They haven't seen each other for a long time, and we kind of learned that Baxter is like a soldier. They're kind of bickering, and... Sort of the politics of the day kind of creeps in. No better way to settle your little argument with a night of hot sex. <laughs> Especially when you're being spied on by some weird pervert. You kind of see through his camera view. Oh yeah, take it hard. <laughs> take it deep. Puts on these <laughs> sick rubber gloves. and Jill wakes up, leaves back for sleeping, and she gets inspired, I guess. And she starts building a sculpture out of the robot that Baxter brought to her. In the meantime, Alvy, the junk dealer, has done some research on the items he bought off of Baxter and finds out that this robot is actually called the Mark 13, like a combat droid. He calls Baxter. He doesn't really clue Baxter in as to exactly what's happening. He just says, get here right away, so Baxter leaves. Alvy ends up getting killed by the hand. Jill is left by herself in the apartment and this robot starts rebuilding itself attacks her just kind of moves out of the way and it like destroys the bed and there's feathers and and then it kind of hides in the dark the pervert guy from across the street <laughs> decides to finally make his move introduces himself and he's super creepy and of course he's wearing a hawaiian shirt and there's sandals sandals <laughs> and he's got all these sores and everything and she even warns him she's like there's something loose in here he's kind of looking around that and, song too yeah. that we all are the yeah. wimply wumply yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it's a great scene because you know like this fucking guy is gonna get it yeah and you know the thing is loose yeah too. still on the loose <laughs> pulls open the blinds and then you yeah, she's, she's like, no, don't yeah. do that! And through the blinds, you can see the eyes of the robot, and it just goes right through the glass and grabs his face and puts his fingers right through his eye socket. And, and drills through yeah, him yeah, and all drills that. drills right through him and just destroys <laughs> this guy. It just rips him to shreds. In the meantime, Baxter has called his buddy Shades. Get to Jill's place because she's in trouble. <laughs> Shades had just done all his drugs, and he's just way too wasted to be any help. Yeah, okay, I'll go help her. And he goes to put on his pants and just pass. Is out. So now the robot is loose in the house. Still on the loose! Jill's by herself. Shades is slowly on the way. Jill. Baxter is on the way too, but he's way out in the desert. See what's going to happen with Jill, Mark 13, Baxter and Shades. Keep watching. One of the things I think that sets this movie apart from a lot of 
futuristic movies are the sets, right? Oh, yeah. You get, you know, a lot of the desolation, the, the feeling of desolation. You A lot of the dialogue helps with that, too, right? It, yeah. it actually puts you there. This movie does a great job, yeah, just picking you up and plonking you right in this world. You don't know what year it is. You just know it's somewhere in the future where life has gotten really, really shitty. The neat camera tricks, like whatever filtering they use to always make the sky look all orange and polluted. You could feel the heat in the mm. desert even though you're sitting in your living room. And the lighting too, like lots of vivid blues and reds and greens, like it's kind of almost uh, reminds me like of, of Italian horror. Very few main characters for the movie, right? They managed to get a very good point across with a minimal amount of characters. Yeah. Which is which is what I like. The fewer the characters, the easier you can relate to them. The less the movie can get bogged down yeah. too, right? Yeah. yeah, there's no throwaway characters at all. No. The movie is very serious too. Like aside from, you know, the pervert guy, guy is or... pretty jokey. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But overall it's a serious tone. Yeah. With serious subject matter, you know, pollution and overpopulation, sterilization and all this kind of heavy stuff, uh, AI, artificial yeah, intelligence. Exactly. It's, it's all relevant to today. Even you know. still. You know. Yeah, more so today than yeah. it was back in 1990. No CGI. It's the old way of movie making, right? You just see his head a lot of yeah. the times, yeah. but you hear it. Like, nee, yeah. nee. You see the hand moving and yep. uh, there's the odd full shot of the full robot where there's some stop motion. But that's all you need. Yeah. You can make up the rest in your mind, yeah. which is perfect. The kills for this movie, there's not many. There's not a yeah. huge body count, but they're really good. It makes it worth it. Right? Yeah, like the effects look great, and they're all really gruesome. <laughs> there's a great scene where this guy gets cut in half by some door. <laughs> yeah. The door is meant to protect her, yeah. right, from the outside, but it's keeping her in with yeah. this yeah. deadly thing, yeah. right? Yeah. It's kind of neat. And it's also kills people who are supposed to be coming to save her. The character, Jill, is a shit brick house. She takes yeah. a hell of a beating in this movie and keeps ticking. <laughs> like, by the end, she is a bloody mess. Gone through hell and back and gone through stories of the building yeah. and back, you yeah. know? Through all that, that Chinese banquet. Right through, like, the window <laughs> into this other apartment that, like, wrecks their dinner. And... <laughs> The men in this movie are pretty much useless. Yeah. They, they don't really, they can't do anything. Yeah. They're all getting killed off. Yeah. So she's like, even though she has help, she's on her own. Oh yeah, the music in this movie is super cool. You know, it starts off in the desert mm -hmm. and there's kind yeah. of steel, pedal steel guitar. But then there's kind of some synthesizer stuff happening. It works perfect with like this kind of like old looking desert, you know, country mm -hmm. type music, but then the futuristic end of it with the, the synthesizer music and all the sounds that happen in this movie, like yeah. super abrasive in your face, loud and obnoxious. Yeah. Yeah. Like a lot of drilling yeah, like sound. Purposely to kind of reflect this machine that's attacking you and kind of really kind of gets you on edge just from this constant loud noises that you're hearing. Yeah. And there's some music by bands too, like uh, well, Motorhead. Yeah. She's watching a TV and it's showing Guar playing, <laughs> but it's not Guar's music. It's Ministry that's playing. So it's kind of weird how they did that. I'm not sure why. And it's cool how this movie it relates to like Mark 13 in the Bible, right? Yeah. Um, no flesh should be spared, and that's the name of the fucking robot. Yeah. <laughs> it's cool. The movie has actually had some controversy behind it. They were sued because it blatantly plagiarizes a short story called Shock, which appeared in like a, a Judge Dredd comic book. You know, it's very stylistic. So if you want like a kind of a visual stylistic feast that kind of bombards all your senses. Yeah. And you like science fiction and cyberpunk. It's kind of like a cyberpunk slasher. Right, with a with a sort of a real twist on it, yeah. right? The real idea yeah. behind it. Yeah, the reality of that this can be our future mm -hmm. is, is pretty cool. So yeah, if you want a really unique uh, experience for a horror movie, please check out Hardware Mark 13. And keep drinking.